Okay, this review is going to be a review of the asset quality of the ship. It's not going to go into the combat or flying characteristics of it. First, we're going to take a look from the outside, and then I'm going to check out the interior. Okay, so it looks kind of weird. I think they were going for some... make it look like... Um, bird I think. The problem with that is that it's supposed to be a replica of an alien spaceship and the alien race is supposed to be um, to resemble birds. So I don't think it, it's really a good idea to have a spaceship that um, resembles the looks of, of, the, of the pilot. Because if it would have a Alien race, it would look like dogs or cats, then this would be a furry spaceship. Hmm. I, mean, I think the artistic shape of it as a sculpture or like an like a um like an animal you would put on the flag of a country, I think it looks really nice. I just don't think that this ships shouldn't look like, like, like animals, I think. Oh, by the way, I parked the ship in this weird angle, so the sunlight comes in from the top so we, check out, so we can check out the roof. We can check out the roof from the sh uh, off the ship in good daylight. And later when I landed on the planet, I'm going to check it out from the ground. So the the lower part of the ship is going to be not well lit at this point. Uh, where should I start? Let's start from the front. It is uh, a dropship. It has VTOR capabilities. And the current configuration of the wings, which you can see here, is currently in the VTOR down position and the gears up. Take a look. Peak, I think, of the bird. You can see it doesn't have a visible cockpit. It's um, somewhere in here that's a cockpit. What I do like is how the, the outer armor plating looks like it, it's reinforcing the front of the ship, and you can see the less armored parts below it. I like how the wing profile gets thinner. I mean, in the sense of it looks good for an animal, but I think for a spaceship, I think it's it's just too weird. It has human markings, because I think it's not the original alien spaceship. It's supposed to be a replica in, in the game's history, made by Asperia, which I assume creates alien spaceship replicas that are fitted for human use and with human technology but make it look like it's actually alien. That's where the markings are. Uh, right. Take... I actually wonder what those engines take in. I think they're not normal jet engines. Also be kind of weird if that ship would get a bird strike, like some birds getting sucked into the jet engine. Would it still be a bird strike if the alien pilot is the bird himself? It was weird winglets, I think they look too much like wings. Again, the whole ship shape is a bit too much... It, it looks too much like a bird, I think. Some kind of torn, torn between um, the artistic shape of it as a, as a statue and as a ship. In terms of functionality, it looks just too weird, but the artistic quality, I think it's good. Okay, let's, um, this part looks actually really nice. I like the tail. It has a certain... It actually looks like um, wings that would help with aerodynamic flight. Also, kind of re reminds me of a bat that that's kind of walking away on the ground. Might be an inspiration for it. Let's check out the roof. 
Okay, it looks like some reinforced armored plating, like the spine of the animal, I think. Yeah, it has a nice quality too. <clears throat> I think there's some really nice detail. When you get a bit closer, I think the polygons yeah, it's rough and the texture quality is mm, it's good, but it's not um, it's not the latest in terms of quality and like the one on the eye, which is like has a much higher level of detail and you look at close. Geometry is, is detailed enough, I think, for, for a large ship. I like the, the yellow uh, yellow contrast against the black. Okay, that's a gun. It's a nice touch. I'm not sure what those circular things are, but I like how they're partially covered by the, by the outer um, plating of the ship. Oh, that looks nice. So um, we had to change the scene because my character got killed by the ship as I examined one of those pieces too closely. Now I'm going to do it from a safe distance on the ground. Okay, we've covered most of the roof, now I'm going to look at the, um, the other parts of the ship. Over here. I think those are VTOL thrusters. Maybe something that generates. I'm not sure what those things exactly do. Neck of the bird, I think. That's a really good, really nice mechanical detail over here. How it flows into the. It almost looks like a set of muscles. This looks like the jaw of the bird. So anatomically, it's a really complex model if you look at. Um, Consider it like a live animal. Well, I think that the bird shape is really weird. I think the artistic quality of the bird anatomy, I think it's really good. Looks like a flexible neck joint. Those look nice too. The texture looks a bit too... The, the dirt map on this texture looks a bit too, too low in resolution. Really good detail, but again, um, yeah, the dirt, it looks, the resolution of it is, looks, looks, I think, too low. The polygon count is a bit, um, a bit too conservative. They should have used a bit more polygons over here. Here yeah, it's a mirrored texture. You see that the dirt scratch pattern is, is symmetrical. It shouldn't be. Same thing over here. No catch to release. That's a good organic detail, how it flows in from these um, Access points on the ship, how it flows under the under the. Looks kind of. I think that's like a rib cage of the bird. I think those are really nice details. Hail going in the rear. You got the landing gear over this side. Beak over here. And what I don't like about the landing gear over here is that you have really low clearance before it actually smacks into the ground over here, you see this part? Really close to the ground and that's the gear. The wings over here, they're really prone to hitting something on the ground, which means 
those wings should fold out a bit more during um, landing configuration because as you can see it limits the potential landing space for the ship a lot by having those wings fly out to the back. Again here, mm, polygon limit is a bit too low on those parts over here. The texture is a bit too, too blurry. Here we can start looking at the entry point of the ship. So as you see, the front cockpit isn't visible from the outside. That's a different effect, which we can talk about later. First, let's look at the... I think that's an entrance, is it? Mm, I think it's not. Now what I don't like about this is the animation is way too fast. Somebody who's standing below it, he's gonna get smacked by that ladder really quick. I think it should be slower and a bit more celebratory. Give it time to actually unfold. Look at it again. Hey, it's a bit too fast. It should give the, the person around it time to clear it so they don't, don't injure themselves. Well, the ladder design itself, again, it, it's really weird. But it kind of fits the whole bird skeleton um, thing. That should an extremely inventive ladder setup. What I don't like is how it narrows down in the, in the bottom means you have less space to actually put your foot on it, which I think it's a bit too much too artistic and it gets the way of the functionality of the ladder. But overall the ladder I think has a really nice unique um, inventive uh, look to it. Like it would be bad if they would have just slapped in some aluminum ladder like you find in other ships. It just doesn't look good. So I think it integrates well into the, the shape of the thing. This. Those are entry points, I assume, for the um, passengers to jump off the ship quickly. Because after all, it's a drop ship. I think it opens too fast. And the texture again is dirty with the axis and mirrored dirt pattern. That's bad, it, it's kind of doesn't look good, and it's too ro low resolution for a dirt pattern. And it shouldn't mirror like that. Seems like they took a shortcut over here. I think those points don't have any ladders. Also, um, there's an air shield. Visible? Yeah, it should be visible. Which is always on, even if the power of the ship is off. And I, I personally, I don't like air shields. I hate them. I think they're too much fantasy. And I think air shields were created by science fiction movies in the 60s because they had a limit of what they could do with their practical effects. So instead of building a complex airlock, they just said, OK, we got an air shield. And that's it. And I think it's a bad tradition when you're against but. That's just my view. My preferred um, solution for that would be that the interior of the ship, everybody puts on their spacesuit and then they would decompress the ship, then open the doors, get out, and then recompress it and they close it. I think it would be more elegant solution for that. Now the main entry point, uh, apart from the ladder, because you can't get in here unless it's really low gravity, unless you can start grabbing onto ledges, <clears throat> is uh, the tail end of the ship. Again, plating would actually look really good if it had more polygons to it and some more metallic sheen to it, because right now it looks a bit too much like plastic. Okay, here's the tail. I'm not sure about this. This looks like some countermeasure part. I think there's a countermeasure. So I really like this entry um, switch. There's a really nice alien feel to it. That, that's a really nice touch. Okay, now you see, this is way too fast for an animation. Basically, you would smack somebody in the foot if you would do that. Let's try this again. 
Yeah, there's almost no way to switch that thing without getting hit by that. Animation itself is good, but it, it's a bit too fast. Let's examine the ramp. Yeah, again, we have the problem with the mirrored dirt pattern going in the central axis. I think the whole ship uses a mirrored p pattern like that to save, I think, texture space on the UV map, that's my guess. But it doesn't look good. They should like use the whole full texture of the thing. Polygon count is a bit... Oh, well, design isn't bad, but the polygon count is just too low. Also, I don't like that brushed metal look. It looks like some brushed aluminum. And uh, imagine you would have to run down that in really cold weather. The thing is hot, it's frozen, and you would just slide down the thing. Brushed aluminum doesn't really look good, I don't know. Right. Good, good mechanical detail over here. Dent spots. Feels like it's an older generation ship in terms of the quality of, of the of the model. The whole mechanism looks great, but if you look close, like you see here, lack of polygons. As if they didn't have how to say that. If you look at a much newer ship like the Pisces or the 100 i Origin ships, they have much more anatomical detail like that without saving on polygons. The overall shape here, everything fits together in terms of the, the larger shapes. It looks really nice. This is the power off state. It's, everything is red like this. If you want to close this part, there'll be some time to figure out how to get out of it. See that blinking thing over here? That's the close button. Also, this is a air shield. Listen to the humming. Okay, this is certain. It's elegant. It's in the background. The reverb is matching the ship shape, and it's not overbearing. The only problem with it is why is it on if the ship is without power? When the ship is without power, it should be completely dark. Like, pitch black, you get nothing. What I do like is that, that contrasting highlight over here. That greenish, bluish, light contrasting the red everywhere. Okay. Um, obviously, it's full of seats because it's a dropship. It's a really good animation, um, pulling the, the thing down. And what I don't like is how the, how the hand over here is, is wobbling around. And it, the hand isn't tightly gripping the, the thing. The animation is gripping it, but as you can see, the hand is just floating around in it. But I think that's more an animation issue instead of something with the ship. I think the animation is too fast. But I really like the way the character reaches up and grabs it and pulls it down. Look at one of those um, animations. Really nice animation. Now with this um, smaller suit, the animation looks much better. Also, I think the hand seems to follow the grip more than on the other scene. That's a really good touch about it. Now I've got the sneaking suspicion that um, I'm playing a female character right now. I don't, I don't think the hand animation is correctly gripped. I think you can't even um, see it from the outside if you don't. Again, the exit animation, I think it's it's too fast. It should be slower, slower like three to five times slower. Like have the character slowly grip it, put some weight into gripping it, and then pull it up. But 
what I don't like is how the exterior atmosphere clips out of the ship. That's something, I think it's a bug or an oversight in the game currently. Should be completely isolated. Also, the audio should be more shielded against the outside. Because this part of the ship is just as close to the outside as, as this wall, for example. Animation looks good from the inside. Obviously some lighting issues. Again, it's more like a general engine issue, I think, not, not an issue with the model itself. The blinking, I think it's a nice touch. It warns you that... Obviously. Actually, I'm going to look at the detail when I'm turning the power on the ship. We are still, still in the lower deck. The ship has basically two decks. Okay, let's, yeah. That's the outside ladder. It's a really intricate mechanism. I think it's really nice. Only problem is it, it might be a safety hazard for anybody touching that thing when it, when it starts to move. The opening mechanism, I think it's beautiful. It could have come with a much simpler model, a uh, human ladder. They went the extra mile on this part to make it really fit into the ship. I think that's a really good thing. Yeah, the auto door closes way too fast behind the ladder. It should like celebrate the animation. Give it like five or maybe even ten seconds more time for the mechanism to work. It goes to the upper deck. And this ladder it's really nice. In terms of functionality, I think it's too easy to accidentally step on the wrong part or step into the empty with your foot and slide down by accident. But it integrates really well into the the architecture of the ship. If you look at it from a distance over here. It blends in extremely well. It actually blends in too well at some point. You barely notice that thing is a ladder unless you're used to it because it integrates so well into the rest of the architecture. It. Really good detail on the top. I think the function of this detail is to uh, allow you to hold on to something on the top while you're flying. Like, probably not in-game, but in real life you would hold on to something the ship is rattling around. Also, I think it's supposed to look like a bird's nest, or maybe tree branches or something. Again, it's a bit too... looks too animalistic, but if you for leave that part out for a moment in your consideration, I think it all fits well together. Don't like that light. Way too bright. Well, this is the co-pilot seat, it's below the captain's seat, and from what I can see, it's exactly the same in functionality. You can fly the ship from here and area control looks the same, I think. So I'm gonna not enter this seat, I'm gonna enter the seat at the top later. Okay, let's see, um, let's go to the second deck. It looks like a weapon rack, is it? Yeah, I think it should be a weapon rack. That animation is a bit disappointing. Turning on tracker arrow now. You can clearly see the ladder animation is what was not actually fitted to this type of ladder. Also, head movement is a bit too limited in tracker on this ladder. You can't drop really up and down. The shaft looks nice. How the ladder basically stops over here, how it those um, bars extend into the top into the emptiness. I think that's a really nice way to integrate it. Here should be a component room. I should do right now on this one. I assume those are the components. Now let's take a look at the seat. Yeah, 
the the animations were not fitted for this type of control setup. As you can see here, it's just, I think, um, copied over from ship, which doesn't really look good. And the game has been in the, the sorry, the ship has been in the game for quite a long time already, I think. How many months? Sometime early 2020, I think. So they should really get this uh, fixed. Now what I do like about this cockpit is, uh, first you see, like, this control setup looks extremely weird. It's going to get weirder when you start actually using it. Well, uh, what looks really nice in this one is those boxes over here. They look like somebody refitted this alien ship with some human controls on top of it to help with using it. The only problem is that the polygon count is quite primitive on this one. Look at this one over here, like... Mm, yeah, you see a lack of polygons. Kind of weird. You see those holes here for screws. They actually have more. They have smoother cylindrical um, holes than you got over here. So I think they really need to uh, reason that a bit. What I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna turn on the lights, and then in the later part of the video I'm gonna fly it in space so you can see how this control setup works. Because on the ground, uh, you can't see how it articulates, which is extremely interesting. That's a nice effect, isn't it? Pretty nice sound, the way the engine blows up. So apparently this appears to be some... type of video feed system, or other optical system that can see through the outer shell of the ship, because as you can see from the outside, there's no visible um, well, um, cockpit view. So my, my guess is how technology would work is that the interior um, plate, plate glass gets information from some type of optical sensor integrated in this knot and feeds it into it like this. Which I think is a really beautiful effect. And the struts look delicate. But since they're not structural support struts, I assume, I think they look good for this one. Take a look at the ship uh, with the lights on. This is some really nice, um, I think this upper part looks really nice. It, it simulates kind of daylight coming from the top and gives you a beautiful contrast between between the between the um, overpowered red light and the daylight coming from the top. It, it's, I think it, it looks absolutely beautiful. I think most ships should have simulated daylight coming from the top. Look at the. Looks really beautiful over here. What I do not like about this light setup is that the, the midsection of the ship is too well illuminated. I think they should have left it, the daylight coming from the top and the reddish light on the top from the from below. But I know that this, this midsection looks a bit too well lit and too metallic. I uh, have left the, the lower part a bit redder and the upper, top, upper part a bit uh, white like that. to the air shields uh, much more pronounced. Take this ship into space so you can see how the uh, controls are. Uh, 
You might have noticed on the ship there's no beds or any type of storage system, like a table or things you can put inside. It's, it's a pure combat ship where you can drop off stuff and you fly back to whatever place you came from. Take off a bit and show you the um, retail. Now we're on flight, let's retract the landing gear. Here's to automatically switch into VTOL configuration if you press landing gear button. A bit slower in vertical flight. I'm gonna fly out of the atmosphere. I'm gonna roll left. Right. Notice how the whole control setup moves. I just move right. Just this. Strafing move. Down like this. Ah. I'm pressing space. Strafing down. It's a really unique looking um, drill setup. I think it's too weird. But it's, it's really inventive and it fits into this weird alien concept of control. But it looks kind of silly if you want to roll you have to do this and obviously the animation as you can see doesn't fit it yet also i think it's it's rather bad idea to have the whole mfd setup turn itself around with the whole console because as a pilot you don't want your mfds and instruments flopping left and right while you're while you're moving around and trying to, to read them in combat or in, in flight time. Yeah, I think they should detach the MFDs from control setup. Also, I think it reacts too soon to movement. Like if you if you move strafe, the stick instantly moves and the ship along with it. But in real life, there's a small delay. Like if you drive a car or if you fly a ship, uh, sorry, a plane or boat, any steering input has a small delay to it. So it's really small, but you will notice it if if you drive a car, you turn a wheel or something, or if you press the pedal. And I think it's quite irritating when you start rolling how the ship starts moving instantly along with the controls. Like it should be delayed, the control starts moving first and then the ship with it. Look at the sound of the ship. Let's go slow down. The sound is actually relatively quiet on this one, which is a good thing because uh, you're inside it. A lot of Roger big ships, so you shouldn't hear much of the sun outside. Really not liking that overheat system in general in the game, but the game basically stops your entire ship for a few seconds. Decouple tower. Alright. Nice fat drone and this spooling up alien, um, alien sound uh, attached to it. I think it's good. It fits it. So overall, the sound quality in this ship is actually quite good. I would call it like in the upper 20% of ships in terms of quality in, in the way the engine sounds and all the movement sounds. 
the video too. Putting on the thrusters? No. I got a problem with those thrusters. Slow down a bit to actually show you. thrusters. They look actually really bad for thrusters. They look like um, like like one of those firebox thingies. All the sparks coming out. I think that's really bad thrust effect in the game. I think it's also kind of off-center towards... It's angled down, I think, 3% for no reason, for 3 degrees. It looks like a firecracker going off, and the, the colors don't make any sense. Like, it doesn't have the same beauty like um, you would find on the Origin ships, Pisces, or any modern ship in the game. That looks a bit, that looks really bad for a particle effect, I would say. So in conclusion about the whole ship. I think it's a bit too weird for a spaceship. I'm not liking the whole bird setup because it's an alien bird race. Like that. But if you look at it as a structure or a statue, I think the exterior looks really nice on this ship. Like up close, the model quality is a bit average. You should have used more polygons and the dirt maps, the mirrored dirt, dirt maps on both sides of, of a texture, of, of a plate, for example. Looks like a shortcut. They should have put more work into that. But overall, the shape of the thing as, as an abstract structure, I think it's it's nice in detail, they put some really good work into it, on the outside. Now on the inside of the ship, I like how they, how they remain consistent in this alien art style. Like it's not just an alien shell with a human interior. They really put work into um, this whole alien shape, and the lighting is really innovative. Like that's, that's one of the best lighting setups in the game. I've seen. This whole alien structure, the bird nest... Um, well, it has some functional issues. Like, imagine you're like a contractor and you want to carry an aluminum ladder through the ship or any object that easily gets tangled into stuff. That would be an absolute nightmare. How those welding seams? Yeah, they look nice, but they could use some more detail. In terms of functionality of the ship interior, what I'm missing is a small living compartment for the player. I know it's it's a combat ship, but most players are gonna, I think in most ships would want to have like a small place where they can just maybe have a table, maybe some fallout table where you can um, put a bottle of water on it, because there's absolutely no space in the ship to put like an item just for no reason on the ground. If you have a bottle of water you want to put somewhere, you have to put it on the ground. As I mentioned earlier, there's some animation issues. Entire cockpit uh, control system isn't fitted, isn't properly animated to fit to this type of ship, which means they, they skip that part, probably because of time issues. However, why should a player not expect to have that type of quality when he buys a ship for real money? I think they should put more work into animating those things properly, even for the first iteration of the ship, because it makes uh, the first impression on you as a player how much work did they put into the ship that you paid money for? But for players who play in groups, or like the type of scenario, as a dropship, I think it's a, it's a really well-made ship. It, it's kind of weird. It's kind of weird. It's alien. It's for me, it's a bit too weird. But if you can get used to, to this type of um, design, I think it's going to be worth it for you. I personally don't like the air shields, and I don't like how particles bleed out, bleed in from the outside. 
Boom. I think it's a good ship, but it's not one of the best ships in the game in terms of quality. It, it, it's ranging from the artistic quality is kind of really good, like 7 out of 10 points, I would say. But the, the detail, like the quality of the textures and the dirt maps is actually quite bad. I think that should uh, conclude it, and as always, thanks for watching.